Shalom, guys. Peace and blessings. Hope you guys had a, a really rich and blessed Sabbath. And uh, wanted to get back to our study in uh, the Jewish scholar David Flusser's book, The Sage from Galilee, Rediscovering Jesus' Genius. And uh, he last left off in chapter 4, I want to say. But I'm not really going to cover chapter 4 as we have covered the Torah. We've covered the Torah in our last segment, our last series on the Jewishness of Jesus' teaching. Um, the last segment, I think, had to do with the Torah. Yeah, it did have to do with the Torah, and I, I think we covered it pretty well there. Um, so, we're on to chapter 5 that has to do with love. And like I said, um, how we've done other our other segment, segments, I don't really read um, from the book. You know, I would love that you guys read the chapter beforehand. And uh, what I do is share insights as I as I see them from what I've learned. So I have named I have named this segment. Okay, all the insights I've named it. Hasidut, love, and raising the bar. Okay? Alright, so let's go ahead and start, guys. I have here a passage from Jesus, his own mouth, where he says, he talks about these concepts, about Hasidut, you know, doing, a, doing more than what you're obligated, about love and uh, raising the bar. Yeshua says, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of, your, that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. That's Matthew 5.20. That's deep. And, um, you know, I know the, the, the traditional Christian understanding is that since all Pharisees were hypocritical, that's an easy thing to do. But that's far, far from the truth. Let me share some words here that I've read reading another Jewish scholar uh, Orthodox fellow uh, Pincus Lapid some insights that I, I've got from him it says uh, Yeshua frequently collided with the Pharisees regarding matters of interpretation and he soundly denounced the hypocrisy practiced by some and some here I will capitalize, capitalize the whole entire word some not all of them by some in their ranks. In this case, however, he was not referring to the Pharisees as examples of hypocrisy or impiety. Instead, he held them up as the highest model of righteousness. You, you have to understand that the Prushim were the cream of the crop in Israel in the first century. They were, they were known for their piety. They were known for their scholarship, Torah scholarship, their, their, under, their understanding, okay? Um, there's a very good saying, um, not all the Prushim were Hasidim, but many of the Prushim were Hasidim, okay? So that's, that's good to keep in mind, all right? So, The Orthodox scholar, Pincus Lapid, he points out that in this instance, Yeshua in no way denies their righteousness, just as elsewhere he expressly affirms their teaching, though Jesus found it insuff insufficient to meet their moral requirements for entrance into the realm of the kingdom of heaven. Um, you could see this where there are times that he had found fault with, for example, he'll say that you tithe the mint and the cumin, but you fail to show mercy to your fellow, you know, to your to your fellow neighbor, you know, stuff like that, where it seems like certain uh, certain rituals took precedence over the the pininimus, the in, the internal message of the Torah, and it's always been like that. Okay, the level of Hasidut tells you to reach beyond. Um, there's a story of. I could get this wrong. I know if it's it's a it's a Hasidic Rebbe. And it's on Yom Kippur. And right before they start their prayers, um 
to start the prayers, they're looking for their Rebbe, right? And he can't be found. It's Yom Kippur, Eve, and they're looking for the Rebbe. He can't be found. So his disciples start looking for him, and they they go into a barn, and they look in, they peep inside, and they find the Rebbe on Yom Kippur chopping wood. Boom, boom. He's chopping this wood up. And they're like, you know, God forbid, what's going on? What is he doing? He's breaking the Torah. You know, he's he's... He's doing something express, explicitly that you cannot do on Yom Kippur. He's, he's, so, you know, they finally figure it out. And, you know, the Rebbe went to cut wood for a non-Jewish woman who was pregnant and ill. And it was extremely cold where the, where, where the Rebbe was at. It was freezing. So he cut wood for her so she could have uh, wood uh, for fire. To keep her warm. And so this is what is called to go above and beyond. The, this is the level of chasidut. To get to the internal, to the internalized message of the Torah. This doesn't mean that we break the Sabbath or we break any, any commandment or a Yom Kippur just for the sake of breaking it or whatever. That's not what it means. But it means that there are levels, uh, things that trump other things. There are some commandments that are higher than others. And we've seen this when Yeshua, how he heals on the Sabbath. And he talks about it. You know, he talks about this, that man is above is above the Shema. Okay? Um, circumcision is is higher than Shabbat. Because if, if, a, if, a, if a child is born and eight days later, his circumcision comes and it lands on the Shabbat, you still have to circumcise him. Okay, so... This is this is this internalizing in the secrets of the Torah. All right, so I have some more here. It says, um, in this case, Yeshua was not denigrating the Pharisees. He held them up as high models, which he asked his disciples to transcend. The Pharisees and scribes observed the Torah scrupulously, and they did. How could the Master, how can Yeshua have asked his disciples to reach a level of righteousness higher than theirs? The righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees to which Yeshua referred to is not ex exoneration and justification in the final judgment. Rather, it refers to all of our good deeds, from almsgiving to visiting the sick to self-sacrifice for the sake of a neighbor who is our brother and sister under God. And you could see how Yeshua teaches his level of chassidut um, all through the Sermon of the Mount. And he'll say something like, You've heard it said, do not commit murder, the commandments, right? But I tell you that if you hate your brother in your heart, you have committed murder already, as Cain did. Okay? And he says the same thing with adultery. You know, if you you know, if you, you, you can commit the physical, but if you look at a woman and you lust after her in your heart, you've already committed adultery in your heart. Okay? And so he asks his followers to build fences as, as other rabbis do. You build fences around the Torah to keep you. And also in it's not just to build a fence for a fence, but it's to find the, the internal essence of the Torah. Okay? And then David Flusser in this chapter, he they go into long, long, a long length uh, about love your neighbor as yourself, which which is in the in Leviticus 19:18. This is the this is the main commandment. Um, the sages say. Um, where it says you should love the Lord your God, you should love the Lord above all else, and love the Lord your God with all your heart, that this is evidenced in how you love your neighbor. The sages teach this. And Judaism is big on this. Um, the sages have been big on this. You know, loving your fellow Jew, you know, loving your fellow Jew, it's a, the love of God and love of Jew, this summarizes, summarizes the Torah, right? And so, Flusser gives examples of this level of chassidut. Um, I'm going to read to you from the book itself. In pages 56 and 57, I'm going to read. It says, it says here, Because of the difficulty, Flusser says, Because of the difficulty of knowing how far God's love and mercy extended, many concluded that one ought to show love and mercy toward all, both righteous and the wicked. In this, they would be imitating God himself. The Gospel of Luke puts it puts this saying into Yeshua, saying, Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. 
Luke 6.36. This is an old rabbinic saying, Flusser says. And he he sources the Melchita Rabbi Ishmael and on Exodus 15.2. Luke 6.36 is a parallel to Matthew 5.48. You must be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. You see, the, you see to the to the to the to the high standard that Yeshua has for his disciples. And no need does he bring this standard low so that people can anybody can just get in or so grace and mercy and all this stuff that you hear in traditional Christianity. Instead of doing that, he raises the bar. He raises the bar. You know, you have to exceed the righteousness of the of the Pharisees and the scribes who were the most pious of the nation. Okay, you just couldn't just be you had to be balanced the way the Torah wanted you to be balanced and find that internal the internal message. And so it says the the best way of translating this, okay, is there must be no limit to your goodness, as your heavenly father's goodness knows no bounds. Matthew 5.48 is merely the conclusion to a short homily where Jesus is teaching that God reaches out in love to all people, regardless of their attitude and behavior toward Him. For He makes His Son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. In this, Jesus is not far from the attitude of other Jews. Rabbi Abehu said, Greater is the day of rainfall than the day of resurrection. For the latter benefits only the pious, whereas the former benefits the pious and sinners alike. This quote is found in Ta'anit 7a. Amazing. Rabbi Abehu lived about the uh, common era 300. But there is a similar saying dating from the time of Jesus. Thus, it is no wonder that in such a spiritual atmosphere, Jesus drew his daring conclusion, love your enemies. And he said this at a time when Rome was in power, and Rome was probably one of the most merciless and cruel entities of all time. In other words, return love to those who hate you, or do good to those who hate you. Don't misunderstand, okay? I know people say, turn the other cheek, so if somebody's going to murder you and your, and your family, just allow them. This is not what Judaism teaches at all. And that's a topic for another day. But there are times where, where you should show people who are hateful or people who are full of arrogance to show them mercy because Hashem is merciful right there's a little bit more in here that I wanted to read let me find it real quick okay they continue on talking about the golden rule you know Hillel he puts it in the negative whatever you don't like others to do to you don't do it unto others while jesus said it in the po positive uh do unto others as you uh, as you would like them to do to you right so flusa goes on to say here both yeshua both jesus and hillel before him saw the golden rule as a summary of the torah this becomes intelligible when we consider that the biblical saying you shall love your neighbor as yourself was esteemed by jesus and by the jews in general as a chief commandment of the torah an old Aramaic translation, this is a targum of this biblical precept, runs like this. Love your neighbor, for whatever this pleases you, do not do to him. That's a targum. It's a real targum. This paraphrastic translation turns the phrase, as yourself, into the negative form of the golden rule. The saying, love your neighbor, was understood as a positive commandment, and the words, as yourself, as a negative commandment included in it. You are not to treat your neighbor with hatred, because you would not like him to treat you in that way therefore by means of jewish parallels we are able to see how the golden rule and the commandment to love our neighbor are related within jesus teaching okay they go on and on and on flusa does a great job in this chapter but what i wanted to touch on now and kind of finish up is that jesus in my estimation went even further and i consider him I consider him, and many others consider him, a first century Hasid. Like I said earlier, not all the Pharisees were Hasidim. But many of the Pharisees were Hasidim, Hasidim were Hasidim. I have found that love in Judaism is a big concept, right? And 
is demonstrated mostly to other fellow Jews, as they should, right? Because most Jews live in Jewish communities. And so they should, okay? So it's big. But I have also found that, and this is this is not a it's not to put Jews down or anything like that. I've seen I've met a lot of Jews who have been kind to me and to other non-Jews as well. But the focus, what I want to say, has been internal. So within the Jewish community, right? And so there's been the issues, you know, issues because we can say because of the persecution of non-Jews, uh, non-Jewish people towards the Jewish people, maybe this outlook has been building up, you know, and who can blame them, right? Holocaust, etc. You can see how a, a Jew can be, you know, somewhat suspect of non-Jews. But like I was saying, I was reading of 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 love in Hasidut, and I was reading some of the Bel the best the Bel Shem Tov's writings and how he talks about love, and it's big, it's big. You cannot deny it. But it's all focused on other Jews. Again, which they should. They live in Jewish communities, etc., etc., etc. But it seems to me, and I know a few others, uh, great tzaddikim and great rabbis among Israel, not many, but a lot, at least that I've read, there's been some who have also spoken about this love of your neighbor, of your fellow man, not just as a Jew, but as a non-Jew as well. That speaks volumes to me. Um, because I've been showed that love by some Jews too, and my Rebbe, my my teacher, Yeshua, showed love to other non-Jews like myself, Cornelius and the woman from uh, Samaria and a few other women too, who were non-Jews. Yeshua showed love. This is not that fuzzy, heavily angel with wings, with the like a cupid, a cupid or whatever, you know, this is not that fuzzy type of love, but love with emet, love with truth, okay? For example, Yeshua, he threw the whole traditional understanding among Israel, he, he toppled it on his head. This question he was asked, one, one, of, one of the scribes, one of the learned men, Achacham, asked Yeshua, he asked him, who is my neighbor? He cut to the core to see what Yeshua would say. And Yeshua answered him with a story. He tells a story, Yeshua tells a story about <clears throat> a Samaritan man um, who's selling spices for his family. And, you know, his wife must have been scared for him. He, you know, he had to travel on the road. He went to travel on the road and he got mugged, he got robbed. And he was, you know, left for dead, terribly injured. And he's just left there dying. And a Kohen passes by. A priest, we're talking about a person in the service of Hashem. A Kohen passes by and sees the Samaritan man there, you know, badly injured. And he basically says, oh man, somebody, you know, I can just imagine somebody else will come and help this poor man. Because he saw that he's a Samaritan. He passed him up. Then it says, a, le a, le a, le a Levite. He also comes by and sees a Samaritan. And probably says, man, there must be robbers around here. Let me get up out of here. And he, he leaves as well. Uh, I got the story mixed up. Forgive me, guys. Forgive me. <laughs> the person... The person who was injured, I'm sorry, the person who was injured was a Jew. I'm sorry. Forgive me. The person who was injured was a Jew. And it, the, a Cohen passes by and he he's you know he's he's he sees this man injured, maybe he's dead, he's a Cohen, he can't mess with dead bodies. He goes by his way. He says maybe somebody else will take care of him. A Levite comes by, a, Le a Levite comes by. He sees the, 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 the injured Jewish man. He's scared for his life and because he thinks it might be robbers. And he goes about his way. But then a Samaritan man, he comes by, sees the Jew injured. And uh, what does he do? He has compassion on, on the Jewish man, you know, and, and then 
in, in those days and always, there have always been a, a rift between Jews and Samaritans. But this Samaritan man had, a, at the very least, he had the internalized, he, he knew what true love was about, of, of your fellow human being, whether a Jew or whether a Gentile. Draw all creatures next close to the Shekinah, right? So he had this, this, this Samaritan had this correct, and so he helped his fellow man. He put him on his donkey. He took him to the closest inn. He paid with his money. He paid the innkeeper to, you know, to, to take care of him, to pay for his food the next couple of days. And if it's not enough, he would come back and pay for the rest. And so Yeshua told the story, and then he asks the hacham, the, 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 the learned man, the, the scholar, he tells him, he tells him, which one of them, the, the Kohen, the Levite, or the Samaritan, which one showed love for his fellow man? And you can almost picture the, the Jew not even wanting to answer it, but it's the one who showed mercy, the one who showed mercy to him. This is the one who showed love to him. And I believe that you could see it. Though Jesus didn't have a lot of interactions with non-Jews, because for the most part, non-Jews were pagans they were they didn't have uh rectified characteristic traits from battling with the Yetzirah and overcoming it and having the tor the torah as well to help them they don't have the torah you know pagans don't know anything right but sometimes you could be surprised and this is what happened here and the samaritans were not all the way pagan you know they knew the torah they just had faulty understanding but they knew the torah and so you could see here Jesus, and, and in the Gospels, he does have dealings with some Gentiles. And it's always, he goes to the level of Hasidut. Many, many Jews probably wouldn't have even dealt with Cornelius. May, may, probably would have never spoken to the Samaritan woman, a woman at that. You know, Jews don't really speak, or religious Jews don't really speak to women out there because, you know, people can talk and so on. Yeshua was just worried about Hashem's truth, his emet. And doing right, you can see the, his kindness with the Samaritan woman. He went to Samaria after that and spent time with them and spoke to them and taught them the will of God. Uh, I'm pretty sure he brought many of them under the wings of the Shekinah. Um, the other woman that had the Phoenician Pharaoh, uh, Phoenician woman, he helped her as well. He healed her. Um, so you can see that Yeshua was a true Hasid, a, a, a true Baal Tshuva. Uh, student of the Torah who internalized a true Rebbe and um, this chapter was really good and I hope this this helped you guys put some things in perspective and helps us think about a few things about how we should live our lives and how should we go above and beyond our obligations whether you're a Jew or whether you're a righteous non-Jew a Noahide or a Ger Toshav or a Ger um we should strive to live righteously. Stay attached to Hashem, to His Torah, and to His people. Peace.